Hi guys, as the Israeli government began the siege of Gaza, a representative from the United Nations has said it is a crime to cut off water, electricity and food to the civilian population. If the UN is saying this, then it must be serious. Now, you would expect the Tories to just pump the same old line that Israel has every right to defend itself and ignore what's actually happening on the other side of this conflict. However, Labour, who are not in power, are perhaps freer to be more critical of the situation and point to the UN if they want to go out on a limb. But no, Emily Thornberry, a member of the Shadow Cabinet, folded. Have a listen. But I mean, I don't. They've know. already cut off the food. I, mean, I hear what you're saying, but what I'm saying is that, is that against that international law. It's really simple. No, Starmer what is doesn't sim- seem to think it is. What is simple is that whatever actions are taken by a democracy, it has to be done in, in accordance with international law. Do, and we have so heard you tonight from the prime from the from the president is. of the United States that he has been on the phone to Netanyahu, and both of them have agreed that democracies need to act in accordance with international okay. law. Pause there, if I may. Do you think cutting off food, water and electricity is within international law? I think that Israel has an absolute right to defend itself That's against not terrorism. That's the question I asked. It is an answer to the question that, that you've asked and I think it's an appropriate one at this time. Why won't you answer whether you think it's in line with international law or not? Because I've tried to answer and I've tried to, 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 I've tried to say that we've already heard from your previous guest about what might be happening on a day-to-day basis. So we're now on day four. And so that we hear that there are, there are troops massing on the border. There may well be an incursion. In the, in, immediately before an incursion, then as the permanent representative have said, that it might be appropriate in those circumstances for there to be the sort of action that we've heard about. And then... The, then, the, then the invasion afterwards. I don't know, because at the moment we're in the middle of a hot war and, and Israel is in the middle of defending itself. And we have to stand with Israel, just like we would expect people to stand with us if we were the victims of terrorism as well. Thank you very much for being with us. Emily Thornberry. Oh, my goodness. OK, so she couldn't answer the question. And then she said, well, I sort of gave you an answer uh, that's appropriate at this time. No, you don't get to decide whether the answer is appropriate or not. The journalist does. The arrogance here, I'm not going to answer your question, <laughs> or I have answered your question, and this is, the, this is the best I can give you. And she sort of didn't want to answer the question, which was interesting. Now, I'm not going to get into the details, but if the UN is saying that this is potentially a crime, then why is it a problem for the Labour Party not to rely on what the, state, the statement from the United Nations? Like, it's not a case of the Labour Party going out on a limb and saying, you know, we're the only people criticising this action here, saying that this is, an interna- is a, a breach of international law. No, they could say, well, if the UN is saying it, then we need to take that on board. We need to put pressure on the Israeli government to respect international law. There's no point saying, well... Benjamin Netanyahu and um, Joe Biden had a chat and they agreed that, yes, democratic countries should respect international law. What's the point of that statement? Like, if you're saying well, that's what they said, okay, yeah, but are they actually going to follow through on that? That's what's more important, not what they actually said. Actions, not words. And finally, the worst part of it all, well... If the UK was attacked, and this has happened in the past, of course, if we turn our minds back to the 1970s and the 1980s, when the IRA had a bombing campaign in Britain, would the UK government at the time be justified in sealing off Northern Ireland, bombing the hell out of it, um, Refu- well, refusing to agree to, uh, at the moment anyway, at the beginning, refusing to agree to a humanitarian corridor to let people out, and destroying buildings with airstrikes and drones or whatever, um, and artillery, destroying all of this, because they believe perhaps in some buildings there is an IRA operative, allowing civilians to be to be killed because they believe someone from the IRA might be hiding in the basement or something. Would that be justified? Of course it wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to justify that. So why is it justified now? Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.